All right, so we're going to jump in, but before we do, just real quick, I don't know if you know this or not, but today is Pentecost Sunday. And for all of you that are not familiar with that, the book of Acts talks about how the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit came. He uh, came and filled them up, and so now here we are, 2,000 plus years later, still celebrating one of the things that I think are one of the most important things, not a tradition, but one of the most important events that ever happened on the planet. The Holy Spirit came. Let me, let me say it to you this way. Jesus is God's gift to the world. The Holy Spirit is God's gift to the church. So you and I have a gift. His name is the Holy Spirit. What you do with him is totally up to you. You can put them over in a little corner. You can put them in a box. You can say, I don't want to, I don't want to ever talk about the Holy Spirit. That scares me. Holy Spirit scares me. Let me just say this to, to you real quick. It would scare me to live life without him. So if you're, if you're scared about him, I feel bad for you because living life without the Holy Spirit is not what God wants for you in your life. As much as you breathe air, and we were singing about this air that we breathe, you need the Holy Spirit in your life as much as you breathe air physically, you need him spiritually. And they were all gathered together in an upper room in the book of Acts. Think about it. They're all gathered together. They have no idea what's about to happen. But in Luke's gospel, chapter 24, Jesus is ending uh, his life and uh, messages to them. And he said, I want you to wait and tarry till y'all be infilled or filled with the Holy Spirit. But in the Greek language, it says the Holy Spirit's going to come and he's going to clothe you. How many of you would have walked into church this weekend um, without clothes on? I mean, I know there's some of you probably think that'd be cool, but it's actually, it's actually not cool. We have clothing for a reason. Clothing covers parts of our body. The Holy Spirit will cover you when you need covered. The Holy Spirit will help you. In the Amplified Bible, when it talks about the Holy Spirit, it talks about seven different words. Not only that he is the Holy Spirit, not only is he comforter, but he, he, it goes on and lists all, all kinds of things, even words that would be like this, like a coach. Now, you know, if you've been in sports, what a coach is there for. He's not there really to be your friend. He's there to coach you and to spur you on to do better. The Holy Spirit was given to you and I so that you and I could be spurred on to be better and do better. So if you're looking at me right now and you think, wait a minute, Sermon on the Mount, get to your message. Um, I might. Um, but here, here, here's what I want to tell you. The Holy Spirit is more important in your life once you receive Christ than anything else. Now, the word of God is right up there, same way. Jesus, right? I get it all. But man, without the Holy Spirit, according to the word, the Holy Spirit gives life. The law gives death. So if you want to live back under the law, you're living under death. You want to live under grace, mercy, and the love of God and live with the Holy Spirit. You now can be empowered to live a life totally different than you could ever live all on your own. And so for many, visiting a church like ours or being in a church like ours on a weekend like this, we have structure. This is, we're going to do this this weekend. Pastor's teaching on Sermon on the Mount. I already taught my message last night um, on this same thing that we're going to talk about today if we get to it. So here's what I want to tell you. The Holy Spirit, I think he's stirring right now in some of you. Like, like he, wants, he wants a relationship with you. You know, we talk about how Christianity is about a relationship. Well, the Holy Spirit wants to have a relationship with you. Holy Spirit wants to literally be in a relationship with you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to lead you. The Bible says in the New Testament, in Romans chapter eight, the Bible says those that are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. So if you're led by the Spirit, what does that mean? Well, leading by the Spirit means this, that he's leading you. It's almost like you're behind, he's in front, and he's leading you. You don't get to lead him. The Holy Spirit leads you. Are you all with me? Now, some of you are getting a little bit nervous. You're like, wait, 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 wait. This is going to be crazy. It might be. I don't know. But here's what I do know. Life is much better with a relationship with the Holy Spirit. 
This church, for all of you that don't know, has been based from the time it started till now on a relationship with the Holy Spirit. With, without a shadow of a doubt, myself, our team, my wife, everyone filled with the Holy Spirit, like they were in the book of Acts. The Bible says in the book of Acts that they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Isn't that amazing? They're all filled with the Holy Spirit. Think about being filled versus being empty. Empty is not good. Your car on empty is not good. Your phone about ready to die, not good. But the apostle Paul said this. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses two through four, he says, you, as you pray in the spirit, you will edify yourself. In the Greek language, it doesn't use the word edify, like that's fine, it's nothing wrong with it. But in the Greek language, it says you charge yourself up or you build yourself up. Now you don't do that, the Holy Spirit does that in you. He will charge you up. How many here have felt like, man, my charge has gone down? I feel like the charge has just gone down. Now we don't like to admit it, but the truth of the matter is life has a way to take the charge out of you. And you and I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, charged with the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter one and verse eight, the apostle Paul, Acts chapter one, verse eight, um, not the apostle Paul, Jesus is talking, Luke's writing it down. And in Acts chapter one and verse eight, it says that he said, Terry, he's referring back to Luke chapter 24, where I talked about earlier, till you be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, you can be in church this weekend, and you can be not filled with the Holy Spirit. This is what I've heard other preachers say. You might have heard it yourself. If you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, you don't have enough power to get up into heaven if Jesus comes back and the rapture of the church happens. There's nowhere in Scripture that says that. The rapture is a guaranteed fact to those who call on the name of the Lord. It has nothing to do with you being filled or not filled with the Holy Spirit. But I will tell you this, how you live on earth will be directly affected by how much you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. If you have zero relationship with him, it's gonna be a life that is pretty rough. But if you have a relationship with him and you can call on him and say, man, I need help, there's a different kind. And here's what I think today that the Lord's wanting to say. And if you're wondering, am I going to the Sermon on the Mount? No, in case you were wondering. I want you to go to Acts if you can. You got a Bible there? We have no scriptures, no screens, no thing in, in the, if you wanna go to our app and look at our notes and uh, look at them for like, I don't know, whenever you wanna look at them, that's great. Um, but we're gonna go to Acts chapter one. Y'all, y'all find Acts chapter one? It's Pentecost weekend. Sunday is Pentecost day. Here's, here's sort of how I'm feeling about this in my heart today. We didn't get saved. We didn't ask Christ into our heart so that we can just get to heaven. In Deuteronomy, it talks about days of heaven on earth. You want to have days of heaven on earth? The only way it's ever going to happen is have a relationship with God, with his word, and with the Holy Spirit. You cannot dump him and say, you know what? We're of this persuasion. We don't believe in the Holy Spirit. Not like you nuts believe in him. We don't believe in him that way. We have a different belief system. Well, without the Holy Spirit, I am telling you, your life is gonna be difficult without him. It's difficult enough when you do have him. But I'm telling you, when you can rely on him, when you can say, man, Holy Spirit, I'm just trusting you right now changes everything. We're in Acts chapter one. Y'all with me? Uh, let's skip down to Acts chapter one and uh, I'm going to go down to verse eight. Y'all with me? Acts chapter one, verse eight. He says, but you will receive power. The Greek word for receive is the Greek word lambano. It means you will take a hold of. Have you taken hold of the Holy Spirit in your life? You say, well, it's just God's will, whatever God wants. Got to bring him whatever. No, no. He said, have you received the Greek word lambano? Have you taken a hold of him? You have to take a hold of the Holy Spirit in your life. 
You say, what do you mean by that? I mean, you actually have to say, you know what, I'm going to do what the Bible and Scripture says for me to have the Holy Spirit have an active life in my life. You, you found that, verse 8? All right, he said, in verse 8, we're going we're gonna to just read part of this for now. He says, but you will receive power. Well, the Greek word for power is dunamis. If you're Greek, I know that they say dynamis, not dunamis, but I say it that way because I'm not Greek. Um, <laughs> But the word dunamis means explosive, dynamite, power. Here's what I'm thinking right here, right now. There are some of you that you've been looking for stuff all over. I'm looking. I'm looking for more. I'm looking for more of God. I'm looking for more power. I'm looking for more stuff. And here's what the Holy Spirit wants you to hear. You will receive or take a hold of explosive, dynamite, power, when? Now, I know you're probably thinking, if you're religious background, you're thinking, well, this is like all the way back 2,000 years ago. Well, the Bible hasn't changed. This scripture's for you today. And, and when you think about Pentecost Sunday and think about this, he says, you're going to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, not in you. So let's all look up because if you came from a religious background, you need to hear this. The day you accept Christ in your life, the Holy Spirit comes and lives in you. That's not a pun. A pun is a whole different thing. The day that you receive the Holy Spirit, he comes and lives on the inside of you. You probably know this story, but let me just tell it to you real quick. In the Gospels, Jesus, they, they, they have this scripture in there, and Jesus is literally talking about wine. And he says, you don't take new wine and put it into old wineskins. Now, for you that don't know why, because the wineskins burst because they become brittle. After using them, they leave them out to dry out and they become brittle. You know what they do? They rub them with oil, type of the Holy Spirit, in the new birth when you accept Christ. Then they pour the wine in. The wine is a type of you being filled with the Holy Spirit after the new birth. And when they put the new wine in, it now becomes non-fragile and now doesn't burst. The day you accept Christ in your life, you have now become a candidate to receive the Holy Spirit in your life. So that now you've been made brand new, the Holy Spirit can come and live on the inside of you. Not only are you made brand new, the Holy Spirit's the one that actually made you brand new. Now he comes and fills you, he comes upon you, and life is totally different. All right, let's read on. Y'all still there? Should have brought my glasses. But anyway, it says this. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will be my witnesses. You ever wonder why sometimes as Christ followers, you're not living the life you should live as a witness for Jesus? Are you with me? You remember back just a few years back when LeBron was playing for Cleveland? If you rode downtown, you saw a big thing that said, talk about witness. What are they talking about? We, we got to witness, we all got to witness the first ever Cleveland team that won an NBA championship. Remember that? Some of y'all remember that? What did you do? You witnessed it. You got to watch it. You got to see it. You're supposed to be a witness for Jesus. Let me just tell you this. The Bible says, be not drunk with wine. I know some of your, your butt might have a little fit right here for a moment. Just settle down. Be not drunk with wine. Paul said this in Ephesians after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, after the book of Acts, the apostle Paul's writing to a church and Paul says in Ephesians, he says, be not drunk with wine, but be being filled, the Greek says, with the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? That means there's more than one experience. Be being filled means I can be being filled on a daily basis. I don't know about you, but it, when I, don't, I don't have an electric car, so I don't know how that works, but with a gas car that I've had all my life, it runs out of gas. Right. Right. Anyone here ever run out of gas while you're driving? I, I won't put my hand up, I never have. Um, but <laughs> if you ran out of gas while you're driving, there are Christians that are out of fuel right here, right now. They've run out of gas, if you would, and they're trying to live the life. They're trying to figure out, why do I struggle? Why, is, why are things so hard in my life? Oh, because um, you have to stay filled or being filled 
with the Holy Spirit. It cannot be this thing that it's once in a while. Once in a while, you know, I got some goosebumps at church. I think the Holy Spirit. No, we're talking about as you leave church today, you can be home on Monday morning and get up and say, you know what, Holy Spirit, I need you today. So I'm going to take some moments and some times, not only just praising my God, but I'm going to thank you and be praying in the Spirit so that I get charged up. Because Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14 that you will be charged, edified, built up when you pray in the Spirit. So maybe you're here and you're like, man, I wish I could sit down with pastor and argue about this because I don't agree. So I totally understand that. I totally understand that you might think you don't agree with this. But what I want to say to you is what does God say? Jesus said, these signs will follow them that believe. He mentions casting out devils. He's not talking about casting them out of Christians, by the way. He mentions other things. And then he says, they'll speak with other tongues. Jesus said that crazy old Jesus. Can you believe it? He said, well, you'll speak in other tongues. Then Paul, the apostle comes along and he starts talking to us about the importance of being filled with the Holy spirit. If you are living your life as a Christian without being filled with the Holy spirit, I am going to tell you right now, it is half the life you could be living versus what it would be like to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit and not only let him lead you and guide you, not only let him be your teacher because it says he'll do all those things, but let him keep you filled up by you. You have an action you have to have and then he does what he does and only he can do that. Flip over to Acts chapter two. Y'all with me? Acts chapter two. I just got to read it, all right? Verse one, on the day of Pentecost. That happened 2,000 years ago, right? Plus, the believers, they were all meeting together, just like this meeting right here. We're all meeting together. Not everyone here might be a believer. And they were all in one place, and listen to what it says, suddenly. Suddenly, what does that mean? He says there was a sound from heaven like a rushing Uh, mighty wind. And what happened is, is the Holy Spirit for the first time came to fill all people on this planet that would want him. It switched from in the old Testament for all of you don't know, there was a prophet King and a priest. They had the Holy Spirit come upon them. They never had the Holy Spirit live in them. Jesus came along and according to scripture, the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove. So he had the Holy Spirit. There's no doubt about that. Don't doubt that he had the Holy Spirit in him and on him. No doubt. But then when Jesus died and resurrected and we preached the great resurrection message, such an amazing thing. What did he come for? He came as a gift to the world. The world needs Jesus. And to the church, here's the Holy Spirit. Don't leave home without him. Jesus said in Acts chapter one, we were reading earlier, he said, the Holy Spirit help you be a witness. You want to know why most Christians are not really, you don't have to go up to people and tell them, you must be sick. You don't have to go up and preach to them. What I'm saying is, why can't we live our lives in a way that people know there is something drastically different with you? There's something different about you. I don't know what it is. I'm going to try to put my finger on. I'm going to keep on checking you out, but there's something different about you. So they're all in the upper room. Holy Spirit comes, fills the house where they're at. And I want to skip down just for a moment because I I don't have time to do all of this right now. He says in uh, verse four, he says, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them ability or utterance. Now, I know that's scary for most people. They're like, oh, that is just scary. But here's the thing about it. When Jesus died on the cross, he knew that you and I would not be able to do this without some helper. That's right. That's right. That's why in the Greek language, when uh, you read it about Jesus saying, I'm going to send you a helper. Jesus said that. Jesus said, when I die, when I resurrect, I'm sending you a helper. In the Greek language, it says, I'm sending you a parakletos. And parakletos means one who's called alongside of you to be so close It's like they're right there on you. Well, the Holy Spirit lives in you. He made you a new person the day you accept Christ. Some of you might have that happen here in a moment when you accept Christ. 
But after you accept Christ, guys, life is much better when you say, okay, I'll take that gift you sent me. I'll take the Holy Spirit. I need him. Some of you have been living a life that is really difficult, struggling. And I want to tell you, I don't have an answer for you through counseling. I have an answer for you this way. The counsel of the Holy Spirit is who you need to come live on the inside of you. Jesus called him a helper, a counselor, a standby. He starts to call him all these names in, in, uh, in the Amplified Bible, all these different names to describe him. He's your counselor. He's your helper. Now listen, I'm all for counseling. I think it's one of the most important things sometimes people could do that they go talk to someone and get help. I think that's vital. But what I also think is vital is all of us say, Lord, I need your help. Hey, how about raising your kids sometimes? Anyone here in the the process right now where you're having the kids and you're raising the kids and you're like, help, somebody help me. I need some help. What book can you tell me to read? And there are great books out there would never not advise you to read some good books on parenting and all that. But you know this, right? Every kid is different, just like every adult is different. So don't try to be like your parents. You have a life that God wants you to live and wants you to do. That doesn't mean you rebel against your parents. But parents, how many of you have ever been frustrated thinking, I don't don't know what to do. I give up. God, I put them back in your hands. If you want to take them, go for it. Like, is that the answer or is this the answer? Father, I know there's an answer from heaven. I don't know what to do in this situation with my kids, but I'm going to take some time and pray and hook up with the Holy Spirit and allow him to pray through me secrets and mysteries that the Bible says that'll pray through you. Back a few years ago, one of the magazines, it was either Time Magazine or one of the other ones, I forget which one it was, on the front cover said the fastest growing thing in the church today on the front cover of a a, a magazine that's not religious, is being filled with the Holy Spirit. All over the nation, not only in our country, but they listed all the countries, it's the most growing thing in all the churches. Why? Because that's how the church started. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured out and it changed the life of everyone. We had... At that time in the book of Acts, we had people like Peter. We had other ones that they seemed to be a little bit wimpy about telling anyone about God or about Jesus. All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit comes upon them. They become monstrous with going out and telling people about the gospel and Jesus. It changed their whole lives. They were shy. They were bashful, whatever it might be. And you might be here and say, Pastor, that's me. Could the Holy Spirit actually help a shy person? Hello, that's me. I am the person that if it was up to me, I would not be right here right now doing this, what I'm doing. And you have absolutely no idea how I would never be doing what I'm doing right now to go off of notes and just say, I'm going to preach just whatever God wants right here, right now. That is, that is not, that is not anyone's comfort zone. I want to tell you, but after doing it for 30 some years, I'm like, whatever. He's either telling me to do this or he's not. It's either God or it's not, but I'm going to step out by faith and do what God wants. Are y'all with me? All right. So I have to do something before we begin to close this up. I don't know where to close it. I don't even know where I started it, but we're all good. If you came to church today, first of all, I want to thank you. If you're there today and you're like shaking in your boots, you're like scared. You're like, Oh, I knew this church was weird. We're not weird but here's what we are. We're people that are endeavoring as hard as we can to follow after God. And the best that we can to say, you know what? If I could help you in any way in your life, young or old, we have have today, just in a few minutes, we're gonna be praying over those that are graduating, whether it's high school or whether it's college or wherever you're graduating from. You understand life is a journey, It's not just a song. Life is a journey, and here's the thing about it, guys. Having a relationship with the Holy Spirit will make that journey a much better journey. Amen. It, doesn't mean you won't, it doesn't mean minus, I will never have a problem. I'm not saying that. But man, the Holy Spirit in a relationship with a human being will change everything about you. Amen. So what I want to do is I want to do this. Before we do anything else, I want to go ahead 
And I wanna pray for those that might be in church this weekend or online. And you're like, pastor, I don't even know Jesus. I came to your church visiting and I don't even know Jesus. Well, you heard me say it earlier. Jesus is the free gift to the world. We all, all of us who have received him, we already have him. So he is here, right here today, offering to you the free gift of salvation. The Bible says no one can come to the Father unless they come through Jesus. You, you, you can't get to heaven. There's not a back door. Are y'all with me? I, I grew up in a religion that it, they, they said you could get prayed out of hell and you could get prayed out of purgatory or wherever. No, listen, you call on the name here, now, while you live and breathe. When you die, you don't get a second chance. I know that sounds tough and you say, well, why is God so tough? Wait, here's how tough he was. He sent his only son to die on a cross so that you and I could have salvation for eternity. So let's close our eyes just for a moment. If you're here and you say, pastor, I've never received Christ. Pastor, if I died, I don't know where I'm going. I don't, I don't know if I'll spend eternity with Jesus. I don't know. I have no idea. Well, the Bible says in 1 John that you can know that you have eternal life. You don't have to not know. So if you're here and say, pastor, I do not know Jesus personally. If I died, I don't know where I'm gonna spend eternity. I, I don't have a relationship with him. I need Jesus. I wanna, I wanna pray with every person in this place, everyone online. I'm gonna ask you to say a simple prayer. And when we receive Christ, what we're saying is, I'm turning from the way that I've been living and I'm turning to Jesus to live a new life. He will make you a new person that will be able and capable to live a new life. So his eyes are closed. I want everyone in this place and everyone online to, to just pray this out loud, nice and loud. You say it from your heart. Oh God, I repent from my sins. I ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart and make me a new person. I thank you now that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses me from all sin. And I am a new person in Christ now, in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I thank you. We're still praying. Father, I thank you that I'm a forgiven person and that you live on the inside of me by the Holy Spirit. I thank you for it, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, eyes, eyes are closed just for a moment. If you're here and say, man, I just prayed that, I just received Christ, if you did that, I wanna, I wanna just see your hand. If you're here and you say, Pastor, I prayed and asked Christ into my heart, or Pastor, I recommitted my life to Jesus because I've been straying. If you just prayed that and asked Christ in or you recommitted, would you raise your hand right now? Just all over the room, I wanna see your hands go up. They're going up all over the room. You say, Pastor, I just prayed that prayer. I just received Christ. I just recommitted my life to Christ. Put that hand up real high. Thank you so much, all of you that are raising your hands. Now, I wanna, I wanna do something just briefly. So maybe you're here and you say, Pastor, I wanna know more about the Holy Spirit. I wanna be filled with the Holy Spirit. I wanna know about that. So I wanna pray over you for that and concerning that. And then if you are one that is here that I'm praying for, because I know there's gonna be many that I am praying for, after church is dismissed in a moment, I want you to come up here so we can spend a little bit more time with you to be praying with you. We have a trained group of people that will be up here that can definitely pray with you and uh, give you a better understanding. And we have a little book that uh, we came out with ourselves back a few years back called Got Power. And that book will explain everything that I just talked about, its messages that I preached over the years that we took the highlights of them and put them in that book. So if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You want to know more about the Holy Spirit. You want to be filled with him right here, right now. I believe he wants to fill you. I believe you've not done anything in life. If Jesus can live in you and forgive you of all your sins, the Holy Spirit can come and be in you and on you. When he comes upon you, the Bible says he gives you power. So maybe you need some power in your life. So let's close our eyes. And I'm gonna pray over every person. If you're here and you say, Pastor, 
I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to know more about the Holy Spirit. I want what the Bible says for me concerning the Holy Spirit. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand. You say, Pastor, I want to know more about the Holy Spirit. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit. Put your hands up like there are a ton of hands up right now. You can put them back down. Father, I pray every hand that went up is a, a heart that you are touching right now. Now, Father, this doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't have to be hard. I pray right now for every individual who has just raised their hand to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That just like in the book of Acts, just like Jesus promised in Luke 24, just like Acts 1, Acts 2, all of the places through the book of Acts, that people were filled with the Holy Spirit. I pray for each pe person right now that on this day of Pentecost, that the Holy Spirit will fill them up. That they will be filled up with the Holy Spirit according to Scripture. They'll be filled to the brim and then the Holy Spirit will come upon them and there'll be a power in their life that they've not had before. Now, Father, we pray that as a church in agreement with all of those that just lifted their hands. And we pray that they have the boldness to come and talk to someone after this worship experience about this that they just asked for. That this is not just a one and done thing that they raise their hand. Father, we need you. We need the Holy Spirit. All the rest of us who are filled with the Holy Spirit, Father, may we walk out of church this weekend, staying filled. Tomorrow at work, tomorrow when we get up, may we be filled with the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. Father, I pray for every individual concerning that. You touch them in Jesus' name. If you agree with it, everyone shout amen.